Western Division, you think that might be in the bank. Jim, you would think that's the way it is on paper, but the teams have met three times this season, and twice the Flyers have come away with one-point victories here in Rochester. Well, we'll see how this one turns out. Back with the starting lineups and the tip-off after this. TV presents a sports exclusive, Quad City Thunder Basketball. Live from the Mayo Civic Center in Rochester, Minnesota, the Quad City Thunder take on the Rochester Flyers as KLJB presents the best of professional CBA action. Tonight's game is brought to you by Blue Jack Auto Plaza, offering Chevys, Hondas, Mazdas, Nissans, Mercedes, Jaguars, and Hyundai. And by Meineke Muffler, American and foreign car specialist. And by Lindquist Ford. You get a lot of Lindquist at Lindquist Ford. And by Command Business, an exciting new approach to office automation. And by Geneseo Motors, we're worth the trip. Coach Mauro Panazio's Quad City Thunder as they get set to win their fifth in a row. And when you get in a winning streak, things go your way, Dan Kennedy. And tonight could be one of those nights for the Quad City Thunder because, first of all, one of their leading scorers, Jose Slaughter, a fine shooting guard from Portland College, averaging 16 points a game. He is ill and will not be in uniform this evening. And also, Michael Graham, their leading rebounder, has either A, been waived, or B, been put on the injured reserve list. We don't know for sure yet, but that can't help, but help the Thunder. What it adds up to is a team in dissension, uh, I think, for Rochester. Our starting lineup for tonight for the Quad City Thunder, of course, we got Greg Jones in one guard. Anthony Bowie will be his running mate at center. It'll be Barry Sumter. And the forwards, Chris Sandel, the newcomer who's made a real impact, and, of course, Bill Jones. For the Flyers, Gerald Patio, Brian Warwick, uh, Cosner, Richmond, and Turner round up the lineup for Rochester Flyers. Our officials this evening, Jim Ferrari and Ron Onesiak, and we'll tell you more about these Rochester Flyers in case you're interested in where they came from. There are the aforementioned officials for tonight's ball game. Coach Benazio had a dickens of a time with the officiating last night, but the Thunder overcame everything, including the losses of Corey Gaines and Cedric Henderson to defeat the Rockford Lightning and take six points in the standings. That was quite a surprise and a real plus for the Thunder. Barry Sumter will jump it up and the tip is controlled by who? The big man and he didn't exactly know where he was going. With the basketball is Brian Warwick. One of the all-stars on the CBA team this year. He's guarded by Greg Jones. They're trying to go down low. Breaking out is Gerald Patio, the UNLV. And in the middle they go to the big man Costner, soft left-handed hook. Well, Costner's only averaging uh, about uh, five and a half points a game, but right away he comes out and scores. And uh, look here, a little bit of a trick by the Flyers, a little bit of a press, something that the Thunder like to do. Anthony Bowie breaks it nicely. You talk about a great game. If you were at Wharton Fieldhouse last night, Anthony Bowie was phenomenal and nothing short of that. Put on a show, scored 30 points. Greg Jones has been back in uniform for the Thunder for three games. He scored 19 per game. Sandal. Takes a shot and goes to the hole. That old call. It gave him the lane, and he just took it, went in, did a nice little half-pipe hook shot, and got the roll, and got it to fall. Some pressure by the Thunder, and now the ball almost knocked out of bounds. Patio gets out of the double team, and quickly it comes down to Turner. Turner under the lane, gives it over to Richmond. He can't buy it. Turner's got it back. Ball loose on the floor. Who wants it? Bill Jones did for a moment, but Turner got it back. Now a long jumper by Patio is nothing but net. Jones has a man open, but he couldn't spot him. And now the ball heads out of bounds, but saved nicely by Richmond. And what is the call? Last touch, they say, by Bill Jones. And they're going to... Now they're going to work no, Now they're the going to change it because he did wave the other way. But Bill Jones questioned the call. I'm anxious to see how the Thunder come out here. Big emotional game last night against Rockford. Of course, the division leader. They came away with the win. How will they respond tonight? That's what we're waiting to see. Sandal trying to find something inside, whistling a foul, and we'll have 
Sandal at the free throw line if, in fact, they say he was shooting, and I think he was. I'd have to guess that this is part of Coach Panaccio's strategy is to get Sandal into the game, and he's told it. Take it to the hoop because he's gotten the ball twice, and he's gone to the basket both times. Ever since Chris Sandal came from Tulsa in that trade, he's made an impact, especially in the late going down at Pensacola. He provided the difference. There you see him, 6'6 six, six out of Utah. And again, full court pressure applied by the Thunder. Warwick breaks it easily up the patio. Sumter will try to shut off patio and does. And now the Flyers will set up the offense. The Flyers come in tonight 9 and 16. They have not won a game on the road. They are 0-10, the only CBA team to do that. Patio with a nice pass to Warwick. Jumper in and out, back in the game. Three-point shot, and Warwick's the man that makes things happen. He's been a little bit quiet here in the last few games, but he seems to be ready for the challenge tonight. Patio wanted the jumper, penetrated a little bit. Now Sandal from 18. Too hard. Rebound, Anthony Bowie. Greg Jones wanted the three, but will kick up the offense again as Bowie goes back and gets it. Jones had 31 last night, tries for his first two, and a whistle. And I think, I think they say a... Chris Sandal set an illegal pick. I think that's called a moving pick, and they're going to call it on Chris Sandal, his first foul on the Thunder this evening. So the Flyers with the lead at 7-4 in the basketball. <laughs> Henry Turner, a flashy player off the glass, not enough. They're going to blow that basket off. They say Patio climbed on somebody's back. I'm sure that's the call. Patio with the foul trying for the rebound and will inbound it out here. Most people remember Patio from his days at UNLV, and uh, boy, this guy can, this guy can really scare oh. this guy. Oh, they're going to call it on Barry Sumter instead. And we just got a, 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 a glimpse of how Patio could get up in the air. Well, that foul again against Barry Sumter, not Patio. Turner. They're trying to get him to work for that 15-footer. Nice pass to Warwick. In it goes to the big man, Costner, but it's blocked and a whistle and a foul. And they're going to call that on Sandals. He just pushed Costner away. Uh, nice play on the part of, of Bowie. He slapped that ball away from Costner, but then when he went back to get it, Sandals just shoved it. See the nice penetration there over to the big man. Now we're back to live action. Patio outside, yeah. And he's not shy about putting it up. He's been getting more and more playing time. A lot of people were surprised that uh, Rockford cut him earlier in the season. Now a bad pass, and here comes Warwick and the Flyers. Nice pass inside, top oh, yeah. Oh, that was a picture-perfect, that was a picture-perfect fast break, and we've got a timeout. It's 11-4 in the early going. The Thunder have got to get it together. We'll be back at the Mayo Civic Center right after this on KLJB. We are back at the Mayo Civic Center in Rochester, Minnesota, and here's that last bucket by the Flyers. A great touch pass by Turner over to the big man, Costner, when he's down that low. He can't miss. He came in tonight averaging just five points a ball game. And he already has that. Most fast breaks start with uh, a number of different ways, and that one started with good defense as the Flyers came up with a steal and got the easy two. Barry Sumter hasn't touched the ball offensively yet tonight. Bill Jones looking for that first hoop. Sandal bothered down low by Richmond. Makes a nice scooping move, but it was an ill-advised shot. He gets it back. Gets it over to Sumter, yeah. Well, he touched the ball, and he jams it through. And nice play by Sandal. He missed the original shot, but battled all the way. Came up with a rebound and got the bucket. 11-6 our score, and now the Flyers throw it out of bounds. That time, Gerald Patio thought that Turner was cutting the way that he was. I think he was trying to get it to the goose over here. He mistook him for one of his teammates. I'm not sure where that was going. Thunder trying to cut that lead to three or maybe two with a three-pointer. Costner covering up Sumter down low. Bill Jones fakes, fires, gets it blocked out front by Patio. Quickly the other way comes Turner. Warwick, that's going to go. Well, Richmond's known for his 
great slam dunks, and he showed us right there. It's on a three-on-one fast break. He got the easy two. Mike Richmond, like Mr. Sandal, played college basketball at UTEP. Bowie Jones with a nice head fake. Buries the 17-footer. That's the kind of shot he likes to shoot. He's not shy about putting it up from the top of the key. 13-8 our score. Flyers get it to Richmond. There's Costner again, and he's shoved by Sumter. It was a nice feedback back for the champ, but he got shoved by Barry Sumter, and that's the second on him. And already the Quad City Thunder's big men, both Sandal and Sumter, have two fouls each. Sumter had a great game last night against Rockford. He was hustling, working well inside. Costner, uh, Costner rather, shooting just a little under 65% on the season, and I think we can see why. Not exactly the picture-perfect form. This man played two years in Italy and a year in Spain, but he misses both free throws there. Thunder seem to be wanting to play a lot of one-on-one -on -one ball again tonight, Jim. And I don't know if they're a little weary, a little let down from last night's game, but they really aren't moving on offense. And uh, that's what really irritates Coach Panaggio is when he starts playing that one-on-one. -on -one. Sandal shoves his way free for a jumper. I mean, he just put his body into his man and buried it. I guess that's one way to clear your defensive, uh, defensive opponent away. The touch of a guard and the body of a tight end. That's Sandal. 13-10 our score, 6.52 remaining here in the first quarter. Warwick, who's been in a scoring slump lately, tries to make something happen over to Richmond. Not there, rebound fought for and out of bounds. It'll belong to the Flyers. Uh, they're gonna say it was knocked out by Bill Jones. That's one thing about these Flyers, and it's why their record is 9-16. They're not a great rebounding team. They, they seem to be in the early going here, but when you look at the league standings, they're way down there. Well, the Thunder just need to you get their rhythm, get a little tempo for this game. Right now, they are not playing a typical Thunder game. Pass underneath, Patio forced it. It's loose, Sumter tries to pick it up and kicks it out to Anthony Bowen. Barry Sumter with some nice hustle. Sandal, can he get another one? Not this time. Rebound Bowie, but he lost it. Anthony with a nice leap, but just couldn't control. The other way, Turner, speaking of out of control, that's what Turner was that time, and Jones the other way holds up as three flyers are back on defense. Bowie, air ball, rebound, guess who? Bill Jones, up and in. When it's garbage time, that man, he has more offensive rebounds on the year than he does defensive rebounds. And he's one of those players that seems to have a nose for the ball. When it's got that loose ball, ball's underneath, Bill Jones always seems to be there. That time, Tony Costner didn't have eyes for the ball. He took his eye off the pass. It went out of bounds, and now the Thunder can take the lead here. They trail it 13-12. Once again, standing around a little bit on offense, not in the flow. Sandal over to Bowie baseline. Up and not there, but he'll go to the free throw line. Anthony wanted to jam, but good defense sliding over by the Flyers. Well, that was one of those special Anthony oh, Bowie shots. And last night, he made just a couple that were, uh, I, let's say, a playground shot. So he just came in, did the driving layup, threw the ball up over his head, and a couple of times he got it to fall, but not this time. Bowie, the best free throw shooter on the team, shows you why, and the game is tied at 13. That one shot he made when he was hitting the lane and threw it up, that looked like something from an old Flying Nun series, you know? <laughs> As a matter of fact, the, the Thunder are the best foul shooting team in the in the uh, CBA this year. They're averaging, oh, about 75%, a little over 75%. Bowie for the early lead. And again, pressure by Greg Jones, but it turns out to be token pressure as the real pressure is gonna come at half court. They're trying to pinch somebody in the corner, but can't get it done that time. Patio, who played for the towel man, Jerry Tarkanian. Andre Patterson is in. Of course, a lot of Quad City Thunder fans remember him from last year. Long jumper by Turner. That's not gonna be close. Good screen out by Sumter. That's how you get rebounds, not with height but with body position, and Sumter did it nicely. Bowie is wide open. Does he get it? Yes. And he looked a lot better for him on that one than he did on the air ball just moments ago. 16-13, the Quad City Thunder trying for their fifth win in a row and trying to defeat the Flyers for the first time here this year in the Mayo Civic Center in their third attempt. We've got a timeout on the floor, and we'll be back right after this on KLJB. Quad City Thunder, corner of the Catbirds in lacrosse. Watch the action with us Thursday at 7.30 right here on KLJB TV. I wonder if I'd go fishing at halftime. Here's that last shot by Anthony Bowie. 
I love Wisconsin fishing, and I love the way this man shoots the basketball. Bowie averaging 18 on the year, and he had an excellent game last night. As you said, he had 30, 31 for Bill Jones. As they have picked up some of the scoring slack that we have uh, missed with the exit of Kevin Gamble. The Rochester Flyer X. No, that's the flight crew, Jim, the flight crew. I was just guessing anyway. Thunder trailed 11 to four, but now they lead it 16-13. Four minutes and 55 seconds remaining first quarter, and the turnover. Sandal all the way down, oh man. Oh man. That is the definition of a power move. Did you see him switch hands? He was going up with his left, and then he switched it to his right, and he's a left-handed player. Thunder seem to be in sync now, and the Flyers in just the opposite end of the spectrum. Andre Patterson, who used to play for the Thunder, turns around and gets an important bucket for the Flyers. And I should mention, Andre Patterson mentioned before the game that he'd like to say hello to the Dixon family in Davenport. Andre says they're nice people, and he's got some fond memories of them. He would not lie. 18-15 <laughs> our score. Sandal hit the deck. Well, Patterson just did Patterson. a little hook move and uh, tossed him to the ground. No call. Shot clock down to six. Jones from three-point land. Too hard. Rebound fought for and tipped nicely by Warwick. Warwick saved that rebound. Nice pass in the middle. And Costner lost the handle. And he's going to get called for the offensive foul to boot. Sandal is over here in the corner, and he looks like he could be hurt. I think he, he got hit in the face is the way it looks. One of those shots across the bridge of the nose, and that'll bring a tear to your eye, Jim. Sandal is holding his nose. He's about to walk into your picture. There he is. He looks all right. Now he's trying to laugh it off. I always admire men who try to laugh off getting hit in the head. <laughs> That's one way of looking at it. <laughs> 3.30 remaining here in the first quarter. Jamal Breck to Dan Kennedy. And Bill Jones walked. Nothing called. Sandal. That's not his shot. Rebound patio. Oh, patio and Warwick disconnect again. And the Flyers have had four or five turnovers here in the last three minutes. And we can see a few of the reasons that Rochester is only 9 and 16 on the season. And it's because, well, number one, Costner has terrible hands. And number two, they use bad shot selection. Harry Young in the ballgame now for Coach Mauro Panazio. He wears number 21. Bill Jones will take a blow on the bench. Sumter trying to find something down low. Tony Brown in the game playing center for Rochester. Bowie with that nice fake. But the pass to Harry Young goes astray. Andre Patterson will try it by. Nice play by Patterson. He wasn't going to be tonight. He ducked right under Ranthony Bowie and got the two points. He just outran the defense. Greg Jones penetration off the glass. That'll go. Count it up and send Greg Jones to the free throw line, reminiscent of the shot he made at Cedar Rapids last week, except it was on the other side of the lane. Well, he ventured into the land of Giants, put up what we like to call a prayer, and it was answered, and he got the foul. He's got a chance for the three-point play. Greg Jones, who used to play here, at Rochester before he was dealt to Charleston and then to the Quad City Thunder. And the West Virginia graduate makes it a three-point play. And Rochester is in serious trouble as far as passing is concerned tonight. Patio, that's a bad shot. Rebound fought for, and Sandal went up high but couldn't control it. Patio, Patio's acting like he wants to make something happen, and he's not going about it in the right way. A lot of people were surprised that uh, he was let go from Rockford, but yet uh, I think we can see now some, some interesting shot selection by Patio. Here's Patio again. That time he got the hard angle from the left side. And banked it. So uh, <laughs> you be the judge. Thunder lead at 21-19. 2.30 remaining here. We're in the first quarter. Sumter trying to get down low and make a power move, but he can't get it to fall. Rebound nicely. Gerald Patio. The other way is Patterson. Just a little bit too much iron. He wanted a foul called, but the referee would not accommodate his way of thinking. Greg Jones. And the Thunder standing around again. I'm sure we're going to hear Coach Panaggio. If we could hear him, we had a mic. He would be yelling, come on, let's get this offense moving. Harry Young down the middle will try to make something happen, and he will be fouled in the process. Andre Patterson in that believe it or not state. Thunder look a little sluggish yet, but they're playing Rochester, and right now they're 
They're clinging to that two-point lead. And, of course, uh, that gives them a two-point lead in the quarter. That makes sense. It is the first quarter. You know, a lot of these CBA players get an opportunity that most of us wouldn't get, and that is to go play overseas. Now, I don't know if it appeals to some people, but to me it would be great to go, say, like Perry Young did, to the Philippines, play some basketball, get to know a different culture, yeah. go over to Europe for a while. He's from Virginia Tech. He's shooting about 50% on the year, and that's exactly what he did, one out of two. Oh, that's a bad call. Perry Young knocked that ball out of bounds. We could see it from our angle, but apparently the official was at Well, he was standing right in front of it, floor. so... Apparently, it wasn't a good vantage point. Inbounds pass, a lot of contact. And there will be no call. Dan Kennedy there with the assist. Now, if they don't, uh, they don't come get this, I'm going to shoot real quick. Well, we got a, got a penalty call. Kind of an interesting call by the officials. Greg Jones will go to the free throw line. Tim Legler, number 24, checks in for Gerald Patio for Coach Scott Carlin. Up and in, Greg Jones. On the season, uh, Greg Jones is shooting 68, almost 69% from the foul line. Again, Thunder lead it now by five with a minute 48 remaining here in the first quarter. And the CBA, if you aren't aware of it yet, is a game of points. Not only scoring points, but gathering points for winning quarters. If you outscore your opponent in any given quarter, you win a point. Patterson gets it stripped away from behind by Bowie. Here come the Thunder. Three on two. Gets it over to Jones. Nice fake. He gets it down low to Bowie. Back to Jones. Look at this passing. Up and not there. Sumter's got it where he wants it. Will he go up with it? Yes, he will. Finally got control of the ball as they battled underneath, and that might have been a case that the Thunder threw one too many passes. Sometimes you just got to take it to the hoop and, and try to get it down. Well, it was pretty, that's for sure. Minute left now and a whistle away from the basketball, and let's see, will Andre Patterson get called with a foul? Yes, he will. He was battling for position with Chris Sandel down low, and obviously the official spotted something that he didn't like, maybe an elbow, and he's going to get called for the foul. So Herb Blunt will check in now for Coach Mauro Panazio. And here's the replay on that as they battle underneath. We've got a good angle here as, as Barry Sumter is battling for that rebound. And he went up with it and put it home. 51 seconds now remaining in the first quarter. Herb Blunt, who scored 11 points last night, he was a pleasant surprise for a lot of Thunder folks. Now he gets it taken away from behind by Warren. Warwick will just try to race down at the other end, and he gets the job done. Well, that's what you call one on everybody basketball. All the Thunder have to do now is just kind of take their time. They've got 18 seconds on the shot clock, 28 on the game clock, and they lead it 26-21 here in the first quarter. Her blunt posted up, gets it rejected by Tony Brown, but that's not the way the officials saw it. Maybe with the lower part of the body, Dan, but not the hand. Well, that's that ever-favorite got him with the body call because it sure looked like he had his hand on the ball, but Blunt's going to go to the foul line. And uh, he's from that powerhouse basketball school, Oklahoma S&A. Which is Oklahoma Science and Arts. He's uh, taken one foul shot on the season from last night's game, and he made it. Tonight, he's not quite so fortunate. He was... Uh, you, you may not recognize his name, but he was an NAIA All-American. So Blunt makes one of two, and the Thunder have a six-point lead again. We're down to 17 seconds in the half. With the basketball is Warwick. You know, I believe I gave that last bucket to Warwick. It should have been Henry Turner. Turner, oh, nice move. We'll check that out later, but that definitely was Henry Turner. It's 27-23, and the Thunder have four seconds left, three seconds. Jones will just fire up, or will he? He gets it off. Oh, he almost got it. <laughs> off the rim. Nice shot by That was a long Greg five Jones. seconds. Thunder come back from an 11-4 deficit, and they now own the quarter 27-23, so they have one point. We'll be back for the second quarter right after this on KLJB. The last bucket of the first quarter here at the Mayo Civic Center went to 6-7-205 Henry Turner as he spun away from Greg Jones and jammed it on home. 
Turner out of Cal State Fullerton. She's a great leaper. Hey, uh, Jim, tomorrow, another sci-fi Saturday night on KLJB TV. Featuring all new episodes of Twilight Zone, War of the Worlds, and Freddy's Nightmare. Sci-fi Saturday night start at 5 on KLJB TV. Freddy is a nightmare. <laughs> oh, it is Friday the 13th. That's right, it is. But uh, we hope nothing scary happens to the Thunder this evening. Kind of surprised at the uh, Flyers, a very undisciplined offense, uh, really throwing the ball away in this first quarter. Uh, a lot of bad passes. And if you notice one thing, Cosner really doesn't have much in the way of hands. A uh, number of passes came in. He fumbled them. And, and this league is just too quick. You can't do that. You're going to end up losing the ball. And Costner was drafted in the second round by the Washington Bullets, so they thought highly of him, thought they could turn him into a basketball player. But he is down in the CBA now working for the Rochester Flyers. Jumping it up will be Herb Blunt against Tony Brown. And Brown wins that battle. With the basketball is Brian Waring. Legler. Bounce pass down low. Turner didn't want it, but Warwick does. Comes right down to her Blunt. Blunt, a 6'10 man. Well, down low, Perry Young. He gets it blocked from behind. Out of nowhere came Henry Turner. Young never saw him coming. Legler. And that's what he's on here for. He's known for his long-range bombs. In fact, he's one of the leading three-point uh, shot Man in the league, he's hitting almost uh, a third of them. Legler, the number one draft pick in the CBA by Rochester, and now a bad pass by Bowie. Warwick spins it over to Legler. Not this time. Rebound comes down nicely. Perry Young will just keep going with it, but he makes a bad pass. And it's a breakaway for Turner. Count these two. Oh, well. <laughs> well. Well, the, the crowd loves it, but your opponents uh, don't appreciate that kind of a showboat. Mauro Palacios docking the Thunder bench. That's the 360 number. And this is something that we've seen all season long. The Thunder really seem to have a letdown at the beginning of the second quarter. They have lost 13 second quarters. Young outside. A badly needed jump shot, and Perry Young gets it. Not the kind of shot you expect to see Perry Young take, but he got it down. Well, he really hasn't seen all that much playing time, so his stats do not reflect what he's capable of. Thunder with the lead again. They try to get it inside to Brown, and what will we have called here? Nothing. They say he saved it. Warwick, look at this one-on-one -on -one move to the glass. Nice pass over to Turner. Rebound comes down to Bowie, who fought with it with Blunt, but here comes Jones. Will Jones wait for his mates? Yes, he will. Oh, Santa wasn't expecting the pass. Got it back. Thunder by two. We're underway in the second quarter. They trail the second quarter for two in points. Blunt's trying to work his way in against Brown, and he's getting eaten alive. Well, Brown's one of the best defensive players in the league. He was two years ago, and now he's rejoined it. He's, he's showing him how to play defense. Patterson had a man open underneath in the form of Turner, but took the shot, and it turned out to be ill-advised, and now Young will hit the deck. And a foul will be called against Rochester. And he looks like he's going to be okay. Pick it that's the kind of that's the kind of move where you end up spraining an ankle. It looked like he stepped on the side of a foot and went down. For the Flyers, Gerald Patio in the game for Henry Turner. Gerald Patio is getting the start tonight at the guard position because of the absence of uh, Jose Slaughter, who is just mysteriously ill. He scored 27 last night as the Flyers lost, but he is not here to score any tonight. And that will put the load on Warwick out front. There's Bill Jones, the leading scorer for the Quad City Thunder, back in the game. Young, a 50% foul shooter from Virginia Tech. And there he is, the garbage man. Bill Jones comes away with another offensive rebound. Greg Jones, that's his shot, but that's not going to find the mark this time. Nice rebound by Blunt. He'll force it up, won't get it to go. Tipped up by Sandal, and what's the call? Did you see Sandal come across the lane and just fall up? And now we'll have... And I think that's exactly what he did. Jimmy came across, and he's going to get the call on the offensive foul. Well, Blunt got a good rebound that time. But the Thunder are struggling here in the early going in the second quarter again. Nate Johnston into the ball game now for Coach Mauro Panazio, and Nate's game has kind of gotten away from him lately. He's not... He's not the same player he was two weeks ago. Warwick. A 
And we've got contact out front, and I think they'll call Greg Jones for the personal foul, and they will. The Thunder lucky there because that that shot almost fell. Yeah, you're right about Nate. He's uh, he's drawn. I don't know if I want to say the wrath of Coach Panaggio, but his playing time has been cut because of his, uh, his shot selection. Warwick at 81, almost 82% foul shooter, Tam Bogo. So the Thunder with a one-point lead. Overall, but trailing in the quarter, 6-3. We've got nine minutes remaining here in the second quarter, so we've got plenty of time. It's Jones, Young, this man, Herb Blunt in there, along with Nate Johnson. Blunt with a left hand, that's not going to go. Blunt has come up empty every time inside tonight, and we've got a whistle and a foul. Legler holding that's his head. I think he got smacked in the nose. Allen, he's also going to get smacked with a foul, so that's going to go on Legler as Bill Jones was once again underneath the basket. He uh, just seems to be the right place at the right time, and he got smacked as he was trying to come up with that loose ball. Well, the rumors persist that Jones might be the next man to get a call to the NBA. Currently, there are 46 players that played in the CBA that are now on NBA rosters. In fact, 46. Every team has one except for the Bulls. Is that correct? That's correct. Jones with a nice pass to Young. Does he have the muscle to go? Yes, he does. Nice move. He used his body to keep Brown away. As we've seen, Brown is a very effective shot blocker. All the way, Patterson. That's a bad shot. Here comes Young. Bill Young will check it out. Wait. Flyers got back in good shape. Jones penetrates, gets it rejected by Brown. Johnson with a nice pass to Blunt. He gets rejected by Brown again. Blunt wants a foul, but nothing happening in the whistle department. Warwick with a good no-look pass to Patterson, who missed the jam. Man. Nate down low, and Blunt will fight with it with Patterson, and Jones will fire from 18. I'll be darned if he didn't hit it. Things are getting sloppy, a little bit ragged here in the second quarter, but the Thunder scrapped well that time. Jones got the bucket, finally. So I, I wonder sometimes if you don't, just don't set a play for Bill Jones, just have the play go wrong, and he'll be there to pick it up. <laughs> that may be the effective game plan. Of course, the coach will never admit to that. Long jumper out front. Gerald Patio's been on quiet tonight and been sitting on the bench. The Thunder will own the basketball. They own the quarter lead at 7-6, and the game lead at 34-29. Richmond back in the game for Patterson. I don't think the coach liked a couple of those shots that Andre took, so Mike Richmond back into this contest. Greg Jones trying to no. fill that gap at the point created by Corey Gaines and that muscle pull above the knee. Young with a nice head fake. Stop, pop, no, but he'll be fouled. Patio is going to draw the foul. That time, Young once again drove to the basket, then almost used his body just slightly to nudge Patio and do the fall away, drew the foul, but couldn't get the basket to fall. It's almost an impossible shot to stop because you drive into your opponent, put your shoulder down, not too much, of course, because that's illegal, and then just fade on back. Young does not get the spin on the free throw. And he's got his problems tonight from the foul line. He came in as only a 50% shooter, and he's not even doing that so far this evening. He's getting more playing time than we have seen him. Uh, a lot of people thought maybe he didn't report in as good a shape as he might have. He's been with the Thunder for the last three games. Now, one of the reasons that we might be seeing more of Young tonight is that we will not be seeing any of Ray Hall. Hall with that Achilles heel problem. I talked to him before the game, and he said it's just too sore, and I've got to simply lay off it. Richmond inside. Give credit for that one to Legler, who made a nice feed on the inside and got the bucket. Matter of fact, Ray Hall is doing color tonight on, on the, the radio broadcast. Quad City Thunder Radio. Nate Johnson, he needs to get his confidence back, and that'll help. Nate Nate's, been in, Nate's been in that fog that covered uh, Soldier Field there a while back, and, and you can just tell it's playing with his mind when he when he's walking around. Jumper outside, won't fall as Warwick hits the deck. Greg Jones pushing it up, pushing it up all the way. Yeah. Nice play by Jones as he just saw his little opening. He took it right there. He's only 6'2", but had no problem getting it down that time. Uh, now the Flyers are just playing one-on-one -on -one basketball. Not, although Warwick, Warwick should have taken the shot because nobody jumped out to play any D on him. No. Bill Jones. Thunder lead the quarter by two, and it stays that way, and we've got a whistle. It'll be a foul on the Thunder or someone touching the net. Loose ball foul on the Thunder. Timeout, Rochester. We've got a timeout on the floor. 
Thunder lead the Flyers 39-33, and they lead the second quarter by two back after this. Oh, the Thunder in a real battle in the Western Division of the CBA as they are uh, technically right now in third place with their 16-8 and record, but you look at the points uh, per quarter average or quarter points per game average, and they are only two-tenths of a point behind the, uh, the leaders or second place team, the Thrillers, and actually tied with the Rockford Lightning. So it's anybody's game as far as this Western Division is concerned, but a lot of games top yet three, to play. Top three uh, all right together. On the other side, it's all the Albany Patroons. Coach Scott Carlin has gotten his troops back in order, or has he? Nope. Legler missed the jumper. Jones in a hurry. Bill Jones is out front for a moment, but not open. Now he's open on the baseline. Ten footer, too hard. Rebound and a whistle, and that will be a foul against Nate Johnston. And Nate knew it too, but at least he's aggressive to the boards. And I think that's what Coach Bonaccio would like to see out of him. Here's a guy with all the natural talent in the world. He's six foot eight, and he can jump through the roof. And uh, I'd like, I think they'd like to see him get some more rebounding. He likes to play too far away from the basket. Tony Brown down low. Number 10 in the ballgame with the basketball is Sean Couch. Couch just acquired tonight. Patio way outside. Patio! Uh, there's no doubt that Gerald Patio can put that ball up, and uh, he's not going to hesitate to do so. The quarter is tied at 12, but the Thunder lead the game after winning the first quarter. They lead the game by four, 5-19 remaining. Bowie outside, count those up. Continues that hot hand that he had last night when he scored 30 points. Couch quickly the other way. Couch, a graduate of Columbia. Jones all the way. Stroll time. And give Nate Johnston credit on that one. It was his defense. He slapped the ball away. Greg Jones picked it up and got the easy two on the layup. Traveling out front is called on Gerald Patio. And, uh, Gerald's known as a guy who likes to make things happen, but right now he seems like he's trying to do it all himself. Definitely what you would refer to as a natural athlete. He can do a lot of things, leap, jump. Isn't that the same thing, leaping and jumping? Jim? Along the baseline, Bowie again. He's warming up again. Interesting play. He came from the near side here around the pick, and they posted him up low against Legler, and he had no problem getting the shot off, and he got the easy two. Biggest lead of the night, 45-35. Couch will get it stripped away by Jones. This is a three-on-one. Bowie to Jones to Bill Jones, who walks. And he's going to walk, yep. And that's I think too what, bad. Hap what happened there is that they got too tight. Their wings closed in. Jones penetrated too far, and suddenly he had three men in the same area. We got a timeout. Thunder lead it by ten. And we're back in Minnesota right after this. There you see some of the over 2,000 fans here at the Rochester Quad City Thunder game. Shake the thunder. <laughs> Beautiful facility here, isn't it? This is just a, a lovely place to play basketball. It's actually more than just the building you're seeing now because there is another building down the hall and I'm told yet another one somewhere else in the facility. So you can actually have three events here going on at once. Out front is Legler. Richmond wants the jump shot. Tipped up, no good, by Brown, and somehow Bill Jones controls it. Jones better slow. He finally does Jones for three. Not even close. And Nate Johnston will set up the offense. Jones has been a little quiet tonight, although he did penetrate moments ago, but Thunder lead it. I don't care who's scoring the points. 45-35, they lead it. There's Johnston with a quick move, but he bounced it off his defensive man's foot. That ball went off the foot of Richmond, but the official saw it the other way. Sure looked like it, but the call goes towards the Flyers. And I think that's what we like to see, Nate. I think they're trying to get him involved by having him post up down low and, and not take those three-point shots that he's so fond of taking. 3.30 remaining here in the first half as Warwick tries to find somebody coming up high off the bottom of it. Thunder playing good defense. Mary Sumter working against Brown. Did you see the double team? Johnston helped them out. And now we've got a jump ball call. Johnston jump came ball. up as Brown was going to turn around and fire, and he helped out on the double team. And that's the one of the problems that the, the Flyers have right now is they're playing, uh, as we talked about, too much one-on-one -on -one type ball. And what happens there? It's easy to get double teamed. We saw it there. Get the ball stripped. This time it ends up in a jump ball situation. Jump control the patio. He'll wiggle his way along the baseline. Johnston let him get away. It's 
It's amazing that he can get down there and get in and get that basket, but he's got a lot of natural ability. Thunder's lead down to eight. Will it be 10 again? You bet it will, says Anthony Bowie. Anthony continues to have that hot hand. His, uh, his suspect is outside shooting, but for the last two games, he has been red hot. Long jumper along the side by Gerald Patio. Now things are heating up at the Mayo Civic Center. 47-39, that quarter score in favor of the Thunder, 20-16. Anthony Bowie, 10 points on the evening. Most of them from long range. Speaking of long range, that wasn't close either. I bet on Tony Brown. Jones forcing Patio along the baseline, but he'll make the best of it. No doubt about the fact that guy is instant offense. Well, I'll tell you, the Thunder now in danger of losing this quarter. Jones down the lane gets fouled by either Legler or Warwick or Brown. Take your pick. Whoa, Warwick threw the ball in and hit Bill Jones right in the head. Now, that happened to Jones a couple weeks ago, but it was Charlie Rosen on the other end. Bill had some bad breaks like that, hasn't Bill he? stared at him like, you know, one of those guys driving in New York traffic when somebody cuts you off. One of those stares like, if it were legal for murder. <laughs> this time, Bill Jones just shrugged it off. Greg Jones is the line. Thunder not making their free throws right now. Shooting almost 69% from the foul line, West Virginia. A free throw is something that I wish Albert Einstein had worked on because it's all mental. I mean, if Albert had figured it out, everybody would be shooting 90%. <laughs> it's one of those things that drives a coach mad, doesn't it? Because his team of guys who play basketball so hard and knock those long ones in can't Tony get Brown. it down. Tony Brown was simply too selfish that time. Jones with nice control. Gets it over to Bowie, 18-footer, count it up. Boy, as soon as he touches it, you might as well chalk it up because he is red hot. That time, Tony Brown was his own worst enemy. Sumter was playing good defense on him. He kept trying to force it, kept trying. Then the Thunder helped out by the double team and came down and got the bucket. Warwick, nice move. Nice play. There's a defensive lap. Somebody for the Thunder has to come over and play help in that situation. Well, and nobody wanted to do it. In the corner now, in a precarious position for Coach Mauro Panazio's crew. They lead the quarter by three. They're up in the game, 50 to 43, but they want to go into the locker room with two points in the bag already. Minute 17 remaining here in the first half. Sandal back in the game. It's power time. Too hard. Rebound fought for. Sumter had it and lost it. Out quickly ahead. This is Turner and easy. He missed the layup. Oh, you called it too quick. It should have been an easy one. And with his jumping ability, you thought that he would probably slam it home. Oh, that's, that really hurt Rochester because they would have been down in the corner by one point. Bowie came back the other way and traveled, so they'll get a chance, but they only have 59 seconds now with the clock running in the first half to cut into that quarter advantage of the Thunder. How do you miss a layup? Well, I guess that's the way. Three-pointer? Where we can't get it to fall. Turner knocked it out of bounds, but Jones saved it before it went there. Jones in a hurry. Nice move. Will he slow? No. Will he hit it? No. Rebound comes down to Gerald Patio, and it looked like Jones fouled him. Now he stole it, but he couldn't control it. Nice steal by Bill, as I think he realized he might have made a mistake there in taking that shot. That's a situation where you pull it out and hold the ball because you're trying to run time off the clock in the quarter. As you said, they've only got a slim three-point lead. Jones is the fly in the family picnic, isn't he? I mean, he's all he's everywhere. He just can't get rid of him. Long jumper and a foul out front. Long jumper and a foul out front by Bowie. And that's an ill-advised play by Anthony Bowie because if you're not familiar with the rules, when you shoot a three-pointer and you are fouled and you don't make it, you get three free throws. So if Patio should make all three of these tosses, the corner will be tied at 23 with 24 seconds remaining. Patio is almost an 80% foul shooter. Quarter lead down to two. Quarter lead down to one. That is 16 points for Gerald Patio, and he has lit it up here in the first half. Patio trying for the trifecta. Quarter is tied at 23-23. 50-46, the Thunder lead it by four, but they need to win this quarter. Otherwise, they'll just get a half point for it. Well, the shot clock is off. Jones all the way down, got it. 
Joe's one on two shook loose, but here come the Flyers. Will they try for three to take the quarter or just try for the tie? Patio and a timeout. 20, 20 second timeout. Timeout, Rochester. Uh, you've got to get the ball into the hands of Gerald Patio, I would think. At least that's what a coach has got to have for his strategy. We'll see what kind of defense Coach Mauro Finazio. You just, you just got to play it straight up. You can't worry about a three-pointer or a two-pointer. What you want to do is deny the basket, period. Don't worry. And here's Greg Jones driving. He got past Warwick. And that's just bad defense. <laughs> well, Richmond was late coming over, and they're, of course, the owner of the Quad City Thunder, Ann Potter DeLong. I asked her if she took her ski mobile up here. No, she flew, I believe. And I had to drive with you. Well, I, I'm sorry, Jim. Oh, you're a great driver. I, I can't read a map for the life of me. Have you noticed? No, Jim only got us lost twice getting up here. Thank you. It's okay. And once I took it away from you, we were fine. I've always wanted to see Maine anyway <laughs> during this time of the year. So an important 10 seconds here as the first half comes to a close. And it looks like they're going to work a screen down low and try to get Patio free up top. Yeah, Patio not free, so they try it. Over to Warwick. Warwick with seven seconds and outside is Richmond. He missed the shot. Rebound patio blocked out of bounds by Sumter. Sumter with the block. It didn't actually go out of bounds because Bowie saved it, but Sumter saved the quarter point. Yeah, give it to him. It looked like Patio had a sure two there, and Sumter came across the court and knocked it away. Richmond fired. That wasn't the shot he wanted. No. But patio, who has had a hot first half, as noted. There you see Coach Mauro Panazio headed for the locker room. Patio went to put the tying shot up for the quarter, couldn't get it done. Thunder lead at the half, 52-46. Both teams back out on the court here at the Mayo Civic Center, and we'll tell you how they reached that 52-46 total when we look at the individual scores starting of course with the quad city thunder you'll see that in just moments the second half just about ready to get underway greg jones with 14 Bowie with 12 coming off that fine night last night sandal with eight perry young chipped in with seven and barry sumter with four and of course for the flyers it was gerald patio leading the way with 17 points although he made numerous errors that uh, almost counteracted that fine performance turner had chipped in nine warwick six Richmond and Costner both had four points. Herb Blunt did get in for Coach Mauro Panazio's Quad City Thunder, but did not score. Field goal-wise, uh, the Thunder shooting 45% from the field, three out of four as far as free throw shooting is concerned. Rebounds, 28 rebounds. They've got 15 turnovers here in the first half, and they are 0 for 3 from the three-point line. And when you take a look at the facts and stats for the Rochester Flyers, you'll see they're hitting 50%, 83% from the free throw line. 22 rebounds out rebounding the Thunder. They've got 19 turnovers compared to 15 for the Quad City Thunder, and they hit one of three from the three-point circle. We'll come back and set the uh, second half lineups for you in just a minute. But first, let's pause for these words on KLJB. The second half of Quad City Thunder Basketball is brought to you by Blue Jack Auto Plaza, offering Chevys, Hondas, Mazdas, Nissans, Mercedes, Jaguars, and Hyundai. And by Meineke Muffler, American and foreign car specialist. And by Lindquist Ford. You get a lot of Lindquist at Lindquist Ford. And by Command Business, an exciting new approach to office automation. And by Geneseo Motors, we're worth the trip. Here's the play that saved that quarter point for the Quad City Thunder. Gerald Patio will get the rebound, go back up, and Barry Sumter says, hello. Bowie saves it, and that meant that it was 25-23 in favor of the Thunder in that second quarter. So they lead the game 52-46, and they have taken both quarters. Kind of a sloppy first half for the Quad City Thunder, but, uh, you know, I... I think that's been characteristic of, of how the team has played all season long. It seems like they play just well enough to get the job done. And well, they're riding that four-game winning streak and trying to make it five. And, of course, the Quad City Thunder will stay overnight tonight and as well as Saturday night because they're going to take on Rochester again on Sunday afternoon at 3.35. And they've got a bad break in the scheduling, Jim. They've played... Last night, they play tonight, they play Sunday, and now they're going to turn around and play that ESPN game on Monday. So that's four games 
in five days, and they've got to do it with only uh, minimal rest between the two games. We will set the lineups for you as we have them. Jumping center will be Tony Costner against Sumpter. And the Flyers control the basketball. Turner gets it out to Patio. Is he hot? Yes, he's still hot. Uh, Gerald Patio feels it tonight because he's putting it up from everywhere. Patio had 17 at the intermission, and now it's a 52-48 ball game. It is Greg Jones and Bill Jones in the lineup, along with Chris Sandel, moving with the basketball, and we'll have a foul called in what is it, offensive? Or uh, they're going to call a blocking foul. And it's going to be on Mike Richmond as he kind of gave him a slight hip check. 11.36. Lots of time remaining here in the third quarter. Sandal with the move. Oh, that's pretty. That is pretty by Chris Sandal. He's got a nice touch for a big man. I'll tell you, if he was a couple of inches taller, you'd be seeing Chris Sandal be playing in the NBA. He's just a little bit short to play that power forward spot at 6'6". Out front is Richmond, and he is fouled by the aforementioned Sandal. Sandal got him with that body. It's, it's hard for Sandal not to get everybody with the body. And, of course, both of them share a common experience. Both played at UTEP, University of Texas, El Paso, both Sandal and Mike Richmond. Richmond's a real story here. He was uh, Rochester Rookie of the Year last season, does a lot of community work in the area. Shoots a little over 62% on the season from the foul line. He's a strong one, and on that first free throw, a bit too strong. He's trying to cut into that six-point Thunder lead, and he can't buy it. Sumter had it, lost it, but the Thunder still regained control. Knocked out of bounds by Tony Costner. Anthony Bowie also in the starting five for Coach Mario Panazio here in the second half. Down low to Sandal. He wants to clear out. Now he'll just take the 17 footer. Too hard. Costner had the rebound. Lost it, but it's picked up. Oh, Sandal went over and back. Sandal went over and back. And we've got a player down, and uh, it looks like it's Bullock. I think he got his hand stepped on as he fell down. And I don't know if Sandal was the man that caught him, but unfortunately, Chris, with that, uh, that large body of his, found himself going across the timeline, and there was nothing he could do at half court. Ended up getting called for over and back. Bill Jones lends a helping hand to Warwick's ailing hand, and we're ready to get underway again. And gee, I, I didn't know that Bill studied medicine at the University of Iowa. Well, when you're this close to the Mayo Clinic, it's just, <laughs> I guess it just kind so. of rubs off, I think. One of the more famous hospitals, of course, in the world, and now a whistle and a foul away from the basketball, or I should say on the drive. Foul is on the Warwick threw the foul, and it's going to go against Greg Jones. That's Greg Jones, second team, or second foul, personal. And second team foul on the Thunder here in the third quarter. Well, both teams feeling each other out here in the third quarter and almost to steal. And now Warwick threw it out of bounds, but last touch, they say, by the Thunder. Well, Somebody they, got a hand on That time the Flyers got a break because Turner slipped as he tried to go for the ball, went down, but one of the Thunder players just caught enough of it, deflected it out of bounds. Thunder leading by six. We're early in the third quarter. Jim Albrecht and Dan Kennedy, along with the KLJB crew. Long shot patio, not there. Sandal almost tipped it in. Sandal went up for the rebound and almost tipped it in. Now the baseball pass to Jones, to Bowie, to Jones, County to. Nice play, and that's the way it's going to work. You don't put the ball on the floor, just back and forth, back and forth, and got the easy bucket. And now the Flyers throw it away. Patio trying to spot Turner on the wing, threw it too high. So an eight-point lead. Nobody's picking up Jones. Will it cost the Flyers? You better will. And the Thunder come out hot here. They stretch that lead to 10 points again, and we've got an early timeout. They've outscored the Flyers 6-2 in the, here in the third quarter, and we'll take a break and be back live in Rochester, Minnesota after this. Quad City Thunder are back up by 10, and the key to this play, Bill Jones kept on coming. It originally looked like an alley-oop for Anthony Bowie, but Jones kept on coming. Nice touchback pass back to him. And coaches drool over plays like that when you can get the job done and not put the ball on the floor. That, of course, the flyer mascot. Not one of our KLJB crew that you saw. <laughs> I thought he rode up in the back seat. Inside the Coster, tipped away Jones. Jones, who leads the team in steals, gets another and makes the Flyers pay for it. And the thing that's so deceptive about Bill Jones, you look at him, you look at his demeanor, he looks so low-keyed, so, uh, you know, laid back, and then suddenly, 
Bill just springs out of nowhere and comes up with a steal. Flyers better right themselves in a hurry. They're down by 12, down in the quarter, 8-2, and now taking it away is Sandal, but he flips it back in. Patio will force it along the baseline. That's a bad shot. Good defense by Sumter. But Costner was on the other side of the basket and got the tip. Jones squares up again and won't get the roll. Rebound comes down to Costner for the Flyers. They're trying to cut the Thunder lead to eight. Richmond, look out. And Anthony Bowie looked like he wanted to draw the charging foul. And then he looked up and he said, well, maybe I don't want to draw that charging foul. Well, at a time like that, you have two questions to ask yourself. Is basketball more important than life? <laughs> Sandal at the other end. And another power move. We've seen him do it since he joined the Thunder, and he's really made a difference with their inside game because that's what they lack. They lack somebody to score from inside. So an exchange of slams, and it's back to a 10-point ball game. Eight minutes and 45 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Inside is Costner. Takes a shot, but it won't get it to fall, and Sumter comes out of there with a rebound. Sumter averaging 11 rebounds per game. Bowie, nice fade away. He's got that push shot going. He likes to do a slight fade away. Rested on that one-hand jump shot, and he's, he's red hot. If Anthony Bowie were about four inches taller and just a little bit heavier, he, you wouldn't be watching him on this television network. I'll tell you that. Well, heck, Jim, if you were four inches taller, uh, no, nah, he still wouldn't be much of a basketball I'd player. I'd still be here. Oh, Anthony Bowie has all the qualifications and all the skills. He just may not possess that size, and I... I know that uh, a lot of people think that in the NBA, defense is something that's ignored, but that's just the, the, just the opposite is true. You've got to play defense in the NBA, or they don't want you up there. Unless, of course, you're an offensive threat a la an old George Gerber or somebody like that. Bill Jones, that's pretty, and the Thunder just aren't missing here in the third quarter. They're lighting it up. They're averaging 116 points per game, and right now they're sitting at 6'6". Six, six. Lead it by 14. Bill Jones only had four points in the first half, but he has come out and he's found the range here in the early going in the third quarter. Henry Turner's been quiet, gets it over to Costner, and a foul. That would have been a thunderous two had it not been for the personal foul. Barry Sumter picked it up. That's his third. Sumter did the smart thing there. He fouled him before he got the easy two points. He's going to make him go to the foul line where... Well, it's not really Tony Costner's game. He's shooting a, a respectable 64%. Last night at the Thunder Rockford game, I was talking to Alvin Gentry, who's a scout for the San Antonio Spurs, and, of course, Barry Sumter was in the Spurs camp, and according to Mr. Gentry, the Spurs are kind of sorry they didn't give Sumter more of a chance because they really like this hustle. Of course, he doesn't possess that great shooting touch. But someday they believe, and a lot of folks believe, that with more experience, Barry Sumter will make it to the shelf. I think a lot of Thunder fans have been impressed with, a, with the progress that Barry has made just during this season. He's really come a long way in a short time. The Austin P. Governor. Everybody forgets what Austin P.'s nickname is because the first name is so good anyway. <laughs> Greg Jones. Jones is open. This is Bill. And he's just not missing here in the second half. That time he came off the screen down low and, and nobody followed him out. Now the Flyers are giving up as far as if their man gets picked off. He's not coming up to hell. Thunder by 15. Turner is fouled. No, he walked before. He walked before the contact. Bill Jones was reaching in, but Turner with that spin move didn't get away with it. Bill Jones just can't do anything wrong here this, in the second half. He's uh, four of five from the field. He makes the defensive plays, and he's red hot. Again, if you're wondering where Ray Hall is, he is in attendance tonight, but he will not play with that sore Achilles heel. And as you already know, Corey Gaines. He's got that strained knee, and he's going to be out. He's eligible to come back, I believe, next Tuesday. Well, Jones finally cools off, and Bowie missed the rebound. Turner the other way. Well, this will be easy for Patty. It will also be spectacular for Patty. Well, the Flyers seem to like to do those those spectacular slam dunks when they're open. It's not bad, except that it's a team that's sitting 9 and 16 on the season. Sandal inside. That is pretty, but he couldn't get it to fall. He had the good touch, just didn't get the carry bounce. Patio again. Nice pass this time to Turner. Henry Turner! Anthony Bowie is fouled as he makes a move along the baseline. The quarter 
standing right now. Actually, there was a timeout call by Mauro Panaggio before Bowie made his move. So it's 16-11 in the quarter, Thunder in its front, and 68-57. As you see, we'll come back with more live CBA basketball after this. Dan Kennedy back at the Mayo Civic Center to update you on the injury situation if you're not aware of it. Of course, everyone who follows the Thunder knows that Corey Gaines is out with that strained muscle in his right knee. Now, he is eligible to return to action on Tuesday. Whether or not he will be healthy enough to do that, we'll have to wait and see. As far as Cedric Henderson, who has an upper right ankle sprain, he is eligible to return on Wednesday. Again, the same status. We'll have to see if he can go. And, of course, Monday, that's the next home day for the Quad City Thunder against Charleston at 2.30 on Martin Luther King Day. An ESPN game, and Craig Jones, that's like a neighborhood game of pile-up. Well, Sumter got pinned in over here on the near side, uh, along the sidelines, and Jones came over to help him out. It looked more like a football play, didn't it? A little handoff to Jones cutting through the middle, and got a loose ball foul. And Troy Lewis makes his first appearance for the Thunder. Troy Lewis, who was... Activated for last night's game. Did not see a minute of playing time at all, but he is in there tonight. Sandal, inside and outside. Troy Lewis, of course, an outstanding player with uh, the Purdue Boilermakers for, for uh, his college career. Came with a thunder. He was their third-round draft choice and then broke his, broke his wrist in the preseason. Brian Warren buries it from the point. And it's 70-59, the Quad City Thunder with an 11-point game lead and a five-point quarter lead after taking the first two quarters. Sandal against Patterson, leaves him in the dust, goes up against three men, and he will be fouled. Talk about drawing the crowd. Sandal seems to like to go right to that basket. I, I'm sure that Coach Panaccio has told him, hey, you're our man inside right now. You're going to have to do the scoring. And so far, Chris, when he's gotten that ball, has taken it to the hoop. One thing is clear about Sandal's past, even though he may look intimidating, his parents were not buying it because they are both probation officers. <laughs> They've heard all the stories before. That's right. Chris, just take the punishment, and we'll deal with it tomorrow. Sandal, Chris Sandal hits it. He's a 90% foul shooter. He's made a difference on this Thunder team. Mauro Panazio wanted some inside scoring muscle, and Sandal has been proving that he can provide some alley-oop. Oh, Greg Jones was just too short. He, he read the play perfectly, but couldn't get up high enough to keep Turner from getting that alley-oop, and he just slammed it off. Warwick to Henry Turner. The Cal State Fullerton grad who lives in Oakland. Alley-oop the other way. Well, I, I think that was one of those where you get caught up in the excitement of it. A nice steal from behind by Bowie. That's who created that entire mess. Warwick was coming up court. Bowie hustling from behind, knocked it away. It went out of bounds, and the Thunder will have possession. Thunder trying to reorganize as they cut the lead to four here in the quarter. And, and as I said before, the Thunder have never taken a 7-0 victory, taking all seven points in the game, and they'd sure like to get it tonight against Rochester. Bowie, nice head fake off the glass. He, when you're hot, you're hot, and that was just a nice move to the inside. Got up and then banked it off the glass nice and soft and got the two points. And getting back to, we were talking about free throws in the second quarter. Now, if they really wanted to make free throws hard, they should set it 15 feet away at an angle on the baseline. Jim, you're making this game too complex. Andre Patterson left wide alone, couldn't buy it. Sumter lost control after he tried for the rebound. That time, Sandal said, hey, Andre, you want the shot? Go ahead, prove it to me. Andre did not prove it that time. Andre's got the great leaping ability and is really tough around the basket, but a little bit more difficult when he moves outside. That's bad defense by the Thunder. Mauro Panaccio does not want to have an inbounds pass. Lewis, long outside, too hard. Greg Jones almost came up with the steal, but Warwick the other way in a hurry behind the back. Nice pass to Costner. Patterson should put this in, but he doesn't. Costner tries for it. Patio picks it up. Thunder just undermanned underneath the boards. They didn't have the numbers. Four flyers there and only one for the quads at Easton. Suddenly they draw to within two here in the quarter. Sandal doesn't buy it, and now the Rochester Flyers can tie the quarter at 21s if they buy a bucket. Patterson saves it. Thunder lead the ball game by eight. Patterson with a nice move, but he ran into Sumter, threw it up, and it doesn't go down. Costner has it, Sumter has it, and we have a jump ball. 
That's almost like a sumo wrestling match there. You got Barry Sucker and Cosner, 6'11 and 7 foot each. And they went down hard. I think we can feel the rumbling over here. Patterson almost got the shot of the night to fall, and there you see the rebound try. And Sumter has his arm in there. And Costner <laughs> says, would you care to stroll? It was either a jump ball or a very sad karate move. I don't know which one. So after the CBA version of slam dancing, we go to the jump ball. <laughs> Thunder, 8-5 and five on the road this year, trying to be 9-5. and five. But suddenly things seem to be slipping over to Rochester's side as far as momentum is concerned. It's again one of those dull spots that the Thunder seem to hit every so often. The tip was controlled by Sumter, but it went out of bounds, and they'll say Rochester has it. That was one of those tips. One of the hardest things in the world to do, and I don't know how many people know this, is throw a basketball up correctly on a jump ball. You, oh, rare, you rarely see it done. And probably 90% of the time, one of the guys jumping will hit that ball before it hits its peak. Patio tried to tie the corner, couldn't get it. Great athletic ability by Bowie who saved it and then got it up to Sandal, who lost it. Patterson, two on one, we've got a whistle to stop everything, and they'll call Anthony Bowie, or Sandal, I should say, with the foul from behind. And uh, probably a smart move, because they had the fast break going the other way, had a two on one with Barry Sumter back from the Thunder, and uh, just a bad play. I don't, every big guy, every big guy wants to see if he can dribble that ball up the court that time it cost Sandal. That was Scott Carlin, the head coach of the Rochester Flyers. You talk about paying your dues. He was an assistant coach in the CBA at Wyoming for five years before taking over full-time here this year. Patio had to change his mind. Patterson doesn't get it to fall. And now the Thunder are just not controlling the defensive boards. Just not getting the same type of effort that we got earlier in this contest. And I just uh, a bit surprised. And this is really the first time that we've seen Coach Panaggio up off the bench. And he's he's uh, letting his feelings be known, as only Coach Panaggio can do. Tony Costner played two years in Italy, one year in Spain. He is St. Joe's all-time leading scorer. But he didn't do it at the free throw line. Well, he's shooting 65%, but this hasn't been a good night for Tony from the foul line. The New Jersey native will try to make a one of two, and he does. 73-66, Thunder lead it, but they only lead the quarter by one. They took the first two quarters. Bill Jones, who came out red hot in the third quarter, has quieted down, as has all of his Thunder mates offensively for the last couple of minutes. Perry Young, down the lane, it'll fall. What's the call? What's the call? Does Perry Young get the ball and the foul? Yes, he does. And that one goes to Gerald Patio, and that is his fourth foul. Perry Young, a nice move. And I was just about to say, that when he came into the league, and here he goes into the lane and he draws the foul as, as Patio tried to cut him off underneath and then uh, turn around and say it was an offensive foul. That just wasn't the case. That was no way because he flew in from the left side of the lane. Young converts on the foul shot. 76-66. Thunder lead it, and they have that quarter lead back up to four. Gerald Patio. Now they work it on the other side, but Patio wants it. Doesn't have the touch. Sandal high for the rebound. We've got shoving underneath and a foul on Tony Costner for Rochester, who will talk with the official about it. Well, anytime you see a guy as big as Barry Sumter go flying out of bounds, what's happened is he's gotten shoved, and that's what Costner did. He fended him off with one arm and tossed him under ETH. Tim Legler in the ball game now for Coach Scott Carlin. Interesting lineup for the Thunder. Anthony Bowie playing point guard now as Greg Jones is taking a seat on the bench, and it's... Uh, Bowie and Jones at the guards, and Young and Sandal playing the forward with Sumter in center. Barry Sumter. If you haven't heard his story, he played at Louisville before transferring to Austin B. He was a former high school All-American out of Lovejoy, Illinois, and he makes both free throws. Only a 53% foul shooter, but he got both of them down. Lead back up to 12 for the Thunder. Quarter lead back up to six. Ryan Warwick. Legler goes off a pick, but good defense by Sumter. Did you see him jump out there? He just denied him the shot. Patterson with a turnaround. No, there's Sumter again underneath the hand basket. Here comes Perry Young to Bowie. Pull up. No, Jones underneath, and he was looking for help, but he was fouled out front. It looked like Warwick got it. On the defensive segment down at the other end, 
Sumter stopped the jump shot that Legler wanted, went back under the hole, got the rebound, and kicked the transition game in. Well, if you're looking at uh, the Quad City Thunder and you look at Barry Sumter, you say his strengths are his defense and his rebound. He's not going to make it to the NBA on his ability to score because he's not a scorer, but he does a couple of things well. He runs the floor well, and he plays good defense. Tony Brown, number 40, back in the ballgame now for Rochester as Costner sets down, and Mike Richmond will also check in for the Flyers. Hello there. <laughs> and there's a young Flyer fan. Gee, you don't think that blonde hair up here in the uh, Nordic country? Minnesota, Minnesota. Minnesota is a beautiful state. I know if you don't like the cold, sometimes you don't think of it too much, but if you like the outdoors, this is the place to be. They break the press nicely. And Richmond will wait for his mates. Legler. Richmond had a two-on-one, but decided to hold it instead. Oh, nice move underneath, but he couldn't get it to fall. Turner could not. Here comes the Thunder. Young, one-on-two. Spin move. He's fouled from behind. That was pretty good defense by Rochester, but the official said there was some body there. And here you can see Perry Young. He's going to take it to the hoop now. The spin move here, and he actually ends up going two on none. It looked like a good play, but uh, thankfully for Young, he got the foul call. He's going to go Legler. to the line. Legler shut him off. Young can't get the free throw to fall. We have one minute, 36 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Thunder with a comfortable lead of 80 to 66, and they're trying for their third straight quarter win. They got over that second quarter bugaboo. Jones with the steal. The finger roll won't go. Sumter tips. No, again, Sumter. Barry Sumter with great effort. And this is the biggest lead of the night for the Thunder at 83-66. Long baseball pass to Brown. He threw it to the official. Well, that was a, a nice play, actually, by by Brown, you you have to assume that your man is going to be at that spot on the floor. He got the ball, was off balance, threw it to where the man should have been, but nobody was home. Well, this quarter's in the bag. Bill Jones, working off Sumter, drops it off to Sumter. That's the shot they wanted, but good defense. Well, Brown forgot about it. <laughs> Brown jumped out and played good defense, and then he left him, and Jones said, okay, second chance, fine. You're going to give it to me? I'll take it. 85-66, 19 point bolts to the Thunder. Lead the quarter by 13, and now... And this makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? They're down by 13 in the quarter, and they're holding the ball. Legler comes off the pick and hits the jumper. With 45 seconds, the Thunder are running. Young, one-on-one, -on -one, powers it up. Can't get it to fall. Sumter's in there mixing it up again. Rebound coming out of there with it is Perry Young. Nice defensive play out front, though, and Turner's going to reap the benefits of his own defense. He knocked it away and then headed back down for it. Some of these fancy showboat dunks would mean a lot more if your team wasn't resting in last place in the Western Division. 85-70, to 70, Thunder with the basketball on the lead. Bill Jones looks up at the clock. Shot clock down to 10. Jones travels on the baseline. Oh, he tried to, tried to shake Legler on that one and uh, just drug his foot. Mr. Benazio a bit displeased with the call. I, I think what Morrow is telling the official is you've got to get his hands off of it. Now, Bill Jones' strength is not his ability to take the ball, make a couple of moves, and get open. That is not his strength. He does so many other things well, but that is not, not his strength. Warwick left alone to one-on-one -on -one with Bowie, and we've got a foul on Anthony Bowie. They cleared out the right side, and Warwick said, here we go. And he beat him to the basket, and, and really Anthony did about the only thing he could at that point, and that was to hack him and uh, keep him from putting in the basket. Yeah, the Flyers got troubles. Michael Graham, their leading rebounder, is no longer on the active roster. As a matter of fact, the story goes that Mauro Benazio was interested in acquiring the power forward from Rochester, but talked with him for five minutes. Perry Young, he can't hit that, can he? Well, he almost did. We'll get back to that Graham story. After we take a timeout, our score at the end of three quarters, 85-72 Thunder. They have taken all three quarters, and things are looking good for Mauro Benazio's crew in Rochester. Back after this. Rochester will have... This duel right now belongs to the Thunder, 85-72. Everybody's a celebrity here. 
Boy, that's, uh, that's something. I don't know if the uh, Quad City Thunderbirds are going to want to start signing autographs too now. Getting back to the Michael Graham story that we were talking about before we left for break. According to the way the story goes, Mauro Panazio got permission to talk with Rochester and talk with Michael Graham to see if, in fact, he was one of the power men he wanted for the Thunder. Panazio told the radio audience last night that he talked with Graham for five minutes, walked out of the room and said, no way do I want that kind of guy on my team. So well, that obviously doesn't speak well for Mr. Graham, and Rochester feels the same way because he's no longer on the active roster. I mean, Graham was one of those power forwards that you get a lot of rebounds out of, but he couldn't shoot worth a lick. No, oh, and he also, they also seem to have a, a dissension problem because Jose Slaughter, one of their top scorers, is not with the team tonight, and he is just listed as ill. Well, they're going to jump this over again. Apparently, the official's not pleased with the way it went the first time, so Sumter will jump it up with Tony Brown, and Sumter will control it to Bill Jones. Well, you mentioned that's probably the hardest thing to do is to throw that ball up straight, and that's why anymore you don't see the jump ball used very often. Down low, Sumter. He forgot the basketball. And it'll come the other way. Sumter wanted to go right and then left and spin back toward the baseline, but he forgot that all-important thing. We have 11.49 remaining in this one. Thunder up, but looking to win that fourth quarter and take their first seven-point victory of the season. Legler. This is Richmond. Not there. Rebound comes down to Young, and he's fouled from behind by Warwick. But Perry Young's gotten a lot of minutes in this one, and he's... He's helped out. And he's responded. He's gone to the hoop. He has 11 points on, on the game. Very balanced scoring through three quarters. Bill Jones has 18 now as he leads. Uh, Bowie, 16. Sandal, 15. And Greg Jones with 14. The Thunder, I don't believe, have hit a three-point shot, but they will hit one this way inside because Perry Young got it to fall off the glass and was fouled. If he can make that free throw, it's a three-pointer. Jones has been quiet from outside. Okay, we'll take a look at it here. There he is. He turns, goes up, and uh, it's a typical move. You lean into your man, force him to commit, and you draw the foul. And oftentimes, even if the man is standing as straight as an oak, with his arms straight in the air, he'll still he'll get the still whistle get calling for it the in. Perry Young does get the three-point play. 88-72, Thunder with the lead. They break the press by going to the middle. Turner couldn't quite get it to Richmond, so they have to wait again. This is Legler. He's got the shot, but he does not have the right aim. Rebound underneath Turner. And Barry Sumter comes out of there with it to Jones, who will not slow. He'll go all the way down. Not a good shot by Bill Jones that time as he missed everything. I bet you Patio shoots it. No, I was wrong. He got it over to Richmond, but great defense by Young. Young just stepped in the passing lane and took it away. Mauro Panazio telling Greg Jones what he wants done. One of those situations where the Thunder, although they have a comfortable 16-point lead, are still using the full-court press because you want to get that other quarter point. It was tough the other night. They came away with a 5-2 victory, but then turned around, and at the same time, Rockford is taking all seven points. So both teams come, come away with a win but the Thunder still lose ground in the standings. Coach Carlin sends in Andre Patterson, the former Quad City Thunder member. Thunder came in tonight with a record of 16 and eight, trying to make it 17 and eight. Looks like they will do that unless the bottom falls out and they have not started off well here in the fourth quarter. But of course, neither had the Flyers as uh, they haven't scored yet. Bill Jones thought he had a steal, but instead he will pick up the personal foul. A reminder again for you folks back in the Quad Cities. First of all, we want to thank you for listening on and watching on KLJB. And secondly, we want to invite you to the Wharton Fieldhouse Monday afternoon at 2.30 for the game against Charleston. It'll be on ESPN. Legler inside. Good. Gravity did not prevail. And, of course, in that game, Thunder hoping that a good showing on television for ESPN will net them the All-Star game next a year. So they want a big crowd, and it's Martin Luther King Day. Kids aren't in school, and they're offering a dollar off to high school students and younger. Jones will throw it up, but he won't get it, but he will be fouled out front. 
Yeah, if they can prove their age, hey, they'll get a dollar off on their tickets for Monday's game. Well, the Flyers came out in this one. It started well in the early going, jumping out to an 11-4 lead, but then the Thunder righted themselves. Greg Jones will get a pair. Jones, of course, played in the WBL. He was, just kind, of, he was just kind of taking some time off uh, during his this early part of the season. He said he played basketball for three straight years. He just wanted a, a little breathing room. He said he got to spend the holidays home for the first time in a long time. Penetrating the other way was Patio, but he couldn't get it to fall. It's a two-on-one. Nice bounce pass to Jones. He missed the layup because of good defense by Tim Legler. Legler got a hand in there and made Jones change hands. Andre Patterson posting up, getting it. I'll tell you a funny story. The man who just took the shot, Andre Patterson, stands 6'8", but he, <laughs> like Greg Jones, played in the World Basketball League last summer, which is a league of 6'4 and under players. Now, you figure it out. It's listed as 6'4". You can be 6'4 and 7'8 and still play as long as you're not 6'5". But yeah, Sandal lost the handle. Gets in there. Yeah, I know what you... Oh, Sandal lost the handle, got it back, twirled and threw it up. I thought I heard a whistle, but everybody seemed to kind of freeze there. It looked like play had stopped, but I guess not. Patterson with another fadeaway, and we've got a whistle. And it looks like they called timeout before. Well, the Thunder have things well in hand. They lead the quarter 7-2. They lead the game 92-74. We've got 8.56 remaining from Rochester. Back on your Thunder station after this. CBA action from Rochester. And you'll see Andre Patterson posting up down low. He takes the feet from Legler, turns around, almost loses control, but puts up the one-hander. Gets two for the Flyers. And again, in case they didn't get the message in the first quarter, Andre wanted to send his hellos to the Dixon family in Davenport. Things have gone the Thunder, Thunder's way so far in this contest. It's, uh, it's been a typical hard-fought game. At times, they've, they've looked kind of sloppy, but boy, there's no quip in the Thunder. They just uh, keep battling, and somehow they seem to get the job done, and, and once again, they've had another fine season. And sometimes what looks sloppy is a, is partly a result of the team you're playing and, and the tempo they're kind of setting and when we say sloppy you have to remember too that the thunder have a lot of new players on their roster too and they've got to get adjusted jones with a nice pass to perry young i don't know what the steal total is for the thunder but they've gotten quite a few tonight now they're Thanks, double Park. teaming I'm sorry, Jim. They're uh, they're double teaming well, slapping it away, and boy, that's how you start a fast break. You Here's start it by rebounding, pass. or you start it by defense. Another bad pass, and Jones will cross court it to Greg Jones for three off the glass. No, that's a little bit too hard. Rebound comes down to Gerald Patio. Nice bounce pass to Legler, all the way down. That'll count. That foul's going to go against Barry Sumter, who tried to come in and cut him off at the pass, but a nice little move with the ball by Legler freed it up and he got the basket and he drew the foul. Rochester's going to need a lot more of these. And there goes Legler as he came in. And you can see Sumter cut in front of him, pick up the foul, and Legler put it in. Legler converts the three-point play. He gives the Flyers 77, but the Thunder are trying for their 95th and 96 points of the night on this trip down. Perry Young, with that move he made before, he is hammered by Andre Patterson. And it looks like that Warwick might have turned an ankle as he came down on the side of somebody's foot. He's hobbling around just a little bit, trying to walk it off. You know, the Flyers really aren't a very high-scoring team. In fact, they are the only team in the CBA that isn't even averaging 100 points per game. They stand at 98 per contest as compared to the Quad City Thunders, 116. There you see Warwick testing that ankle. shot by Young is, is off and uh, uh, Young is a 50% foul shooter on the year and he's done just about that this evening. The former Virginia Tech college player Troy Lewis the Purdue prepster. He's getting his first PT tonight after two games or after the first game on the bench. I guess you can't say he's a prepster if you want to Purdue. A collegiate would be the correct thing to say. 
Okay. Turn around by Patterson wasn't even close, and here comes Greg Jones out of the pack. Contact up close, but nothing called. Over to Lewis. Lewis passes it nicely down to Sandal. He is fouled down low. Nice play that time. Dished it down to Sandal, who made the power move to the basket, and Brown really had no other alternative other than to file it. The corner lead right now stands at 9-5 to five for the Thunder, and, and, you, and you lose track of that when the game gets a little bit out of hand, as this one is, because the Thunder leading by 17 points, but in order to win all seven points in the standings available in this game, they have to play this quarter just like they did the first one, the second one, and the third one. Well, it, it does a couple of things. It, it keeps the interest in for the fans because every quarter is a new game within itself. Also, it creates headaches for the coaches who, gee, it'd be nice. You've got four games in five days. You've got a, a nice 18-point lead sitting here, but yet you can't take it easy because you need that extra point here in the fourth quarter. 7th quarter remaining in this 4th quarter. Turner with a spin move and a nice pass to Patterson, but it's stripped away down low. Looks like Jones had a hand in that one. Greg Jones. It would have to have been Greg because Bill's Bill on the bench. has been replaced by Troy Lewis. They're setting up Harry Young one-on-one. -on -one. He'll go baseline. There's that fadeaway shot he likes. Ooh, Sandal almost got a terrific jam. Lewis inside. He's hammered, and he'll go to the free throw line. Sandal, he loves to... He loves to fly, doesn't he? And don't you like players like that? Don't you like those guys that love to take it in and, and make those slams over the top of their opponents? It's not that easy. When one gets done correctly, it looks phenomenal, but when one doesn't get done correctly, it hits the back of the rim and bounces out about 20 feet, and everybody's going, oh, man. And if you're a solo and you do that, uh, you get a few raspberries from the crowd. Troy Lewis still looking for his first point as a member of the Quad City Thunder. If Troy has a negative to his game, it's his foot speed. That's what you hear scouts saying all the time, and he's trying to prove that foot speed isn't everything. So Troy's on the Thunder board, 96-77 our score. Quarter score in favor of the Thunder at 11-5. Young with good defense on Legler. Way outside it's Legler, and that's way off the mark, but Patterson will hit the garbage. Nothing inside, so Legler will go back to Patterson. Finger roll, won't go. That ball was not headed for the basket. There will not be a goaltending call, just a personal foul on Sandal. Once again, Sumter managed to get a finger on that ball and deflect just enough of it to keep it from going in. Mauro Panaccio will go to his bench, and he will send in Nate Johnston. And again, we have to reiterate that Nate's game has slipped away in the last couple of weeks. And there goes Patterson in, and you can see Sumter come across and just get enough of that to deflect it away from Brown. So Sando will check out. Tony Costner will come in for Rochester. Johnston in, along with Young, Sumter, Greg Jones, and Troy Lewis for Mauro Panaggio. Patterson currently resides in L.A. when he's not on the CBA trail. Jones the other way. Patterson's got kind of one of those L.A. haircuts, too, doesn't he? He's got a, got a few grooves there in his side. Nate Johnston trying to make something happen, and he does. Tough shot. He drove left and then hit it with his right hand, fading away. He has got some, some great natural ability. The Division II All-American from Tampa. Legler bears it. 98-81, the Thunder in control by 17. Not totally in control of the quarter, however, because they only lead that by four. A whistle away from the ball, and we've got a foul called on uh, Nate Johnston. They say he was throwing what he shouldn't be down low. They gave him an elbow. He's trying to break free, take that pass from Greg Jones, and uh, got caught. The only thing you can throw down low legally is verbal abuse, but that only to your opponent, not to the official. Patterson spins, puts up a difficult shot. Costner missed the tip. Ball comes out to Greg Jones. It's a two-on-two, -two, and now Johnston fills the other lane. Great bounce pass over to Lewis. Jones threaded the needle. Great play there as he penetrated into the middle and did a bounce pass around the flyer and gave Lewis the easy bucket. call him Greg Blue Collar Jones. He just keeps getting it done. Then he comes in, does what's expected of him, fade away at the other end. Turner racks up two for the Flyers. Now you talk to Greg Jones and you swear that he is the easiest going guy that you will ever meet. He is just 
Just unbelievably easy going, just takes things as they come. Well, Lewis tried to fade away, but never had much of a chance at it. And Legler will miss with too much iron. Well, that was kind of a strange looking pass. Warwick couldn't decide what to do with it. Now Warwick has it back, can't get it to fall. Patterson has it. This game getting a little out of hand as far as both teams are concerned. A lot of standing around at this stage of the game as, uh, you know, both teams a little bit weary. And they played a tough game. The Thunder with a nice 17-point lead. But the, the quarter game is uh, still up for grabs. And there you can see as Patterson tried to go up for the shot that the young, as he stripped it, caught him on the arm. Yeah, the quarter's still in doubt, though. It's still, if he makes both of these, it would be just a two-point lead in the quarter. But now Patterson can make it just three. And, of course, if he makes this last one, Jim, it'll be a three-point lead for the Thunder. I was noticing Bill Jones come back in the ballgame, and that's why, because Morrow wants this point. I mean, it all comes down to points at the end of the season as to making the playoffs, and then not only that, but who you're matched up with in the playoffs. And just like in every other sport, uh, the better off you are, the better you will be for home court advantage. And we all know the advantage that the Thunder has in Wharton because it is leading the league in attendance. Again, Jones, again, Lewis. Nice play, and the Flyers caught standing around as Jones was able to penetrate into the paint, and he just dished it off to Lewis, who got the easy one. Turner baseline, not this time after a good body fake. Sumter one-handed, tried to get one-handed rebound. The ball got away, and Turner put it back up and in. Jones, again, almost had it knocked away from behind by Costner. Bill Jones in the middle of Barry. Yeah, Barry Sumter buries it. It's 104-85, Quad City Thunder. You get that kind of a play out of Barry, and that is uh, just a plus as he took it in the lane and got the easy one. Legler from outside. Well, that's why they've got Legler. He shoots 43% from the field, but he also is their best three-point shooter, hitting 11 of 32. That's a game of horse right now for the Rochester Flyers. They've just got to come down and put it up. There's only 350 remaining in the game. Johnston has a clear out. He'll take the baseline. Won't get it, but he'll get fouled in half. He got hammered as he went in, and, and if you have never seen Nate take it to the to the hoop and do one of his spectacular slam dunks, I, I think we were all primed for it there, but it didn't happen. It's amazing how many times, and we didn't catch it quite right there, but you did catch the impact of the foul. How many times a defensive man will let that baseline open when there's just a foot between himself and the line? He'll take that fake to the inside where... In actuality, all of his help is, <laughs> and, and let that baseline open, and that drives coaches nuts. I mean, the baseline is your friend. Use it to shut the man down. That's right. That's what you're taught all the way through basketball is to use that as another defensive man. Johnson shoots 76% for the foul line. The Quad City Thunder will be 9-5 and five on the road after this ball game is over, and they will be 17-8 and eight on the campaign unless the Flyers ring up about 10 three-pointers in a hurry. 106-88. The quarter lead also in the Thunder's corner, 21 to 16. Warwick sets up the defense, or I should say, the offense against the Thunder defense. And Warwick is open down the lane, wide open as a matter of fact. At that time, the Flyers used great patience, worked the ball in and out, and then you have the open man Warwick in the lane and got the easy two points. Jones with a bad pass, and here come the Flyers. Turner all the way. This will be fancy time. Heller. Thunder now with only a one-point lead, and Coach Panaggio is not happy. There's, as we've mentioned throughout this broadcast, they're trying to come away with their first seven-point game of the season. They haven't been able to do it all year long. Panaggio checking that quarter clock. It says Thunder 21, Rochester 20. Nate Johnston will force it up. Not necessarily a wise move on Nate's part, but he gets the benefit of the personal foul against Gerald Patio. Nate didn't lower his shoulder, which is the kiss of death. As you'll see as he goes in there, he bangs into Terrell Patio, and it could have gone either way. We'll be honest about it. And the Mayo Civic Center resounds with booze. Right now, we're going to take a break and come back with a final 253. The Thunder lead at 106.92, but the fourth quarter still hanging in the balance. huddle here on KLJB and I don't know what he was drawing up but it better be about a 15 point play. It's amazing what you can do with those connected dots, isn't it? Well, the, to be honest right now, the Flyers are simply playing for the quarter point. 
They trailed the Thunder by one, 21 to 20 here in the fourth quarter. And, uh, you know, they're just trying to salvage what they can. The patio still in disagreement like most of the Rochester fans here with that last call as Nate Johnston drove the lane and Patio you know, thought he had position well Nate dropped his shoulder a little bit as he went into the lane and that those kind of calls can go against you Johnston gets the kind roll and the quarter now stands at 22 20 in favor of the Quad City Thunder now Greg Jones uh, training places with Bill Jones Bill's got a smile on his face why not yeah, he's the team's leading scorer, leads the league in field goal percentage. He's, he's having a great year for a rookie. The Flyers will work it up. Legler against the double team, goes all the way baseline and has it taken away by Johnston. Johnston quickly has it, almost knocked away, gets it back. He finds Lewis, that'll go. Well, it, it wasn't pretty, it wasn't textbook, but uh, Nate finally got control of it, found the open man, and they got the basket. Warwick did his best to mess up the transition game, and he almost did it but somehow the thunder got it back and johnson just kept it going and lewis gets his second bucket of the night 219 remaining in the game warwick finds no one inside so turner will try from the outside Ooh, what a rebound check that that was patio from the corner not turner it was turner who tried to get the rebound went up high got it but just couldn't control it and i'll tell you what you see the thunder here pressing again with two minutes left to go in the game and that's coach panaggio's way of getting the troops fired up again lewis with a pass to sumter but he couldn't quite hang on to it there's jones look at this guy he'll throw it up and hit it <laughs> and he only took two or three steps going through the lane but give him credit he battled all the way and once again it's bill jones who comes up with a loose ball and he got the basket so the quarter now in a much safer position with a minute 46 remaining the Thunder lead the quarter by seven in the game, 112 to 92. Oh, yeah. Costner hits the turnaround. Nice little shot by Costner as he came through the lane, and the coach is probably going to be wondering where was that all night. Well, he's just not a shooter. I mean, they don't go to him for that. But now it's desperation time. Jones almost had it taken away, put it up, couldn't get it to fall, but he'll go to the free throw line. And I think Costner's going to pick up that foul as he reached in. And uh, you can tell a little bit of fatigue there as they reach in instead of trying to move the feet and get in the way and draw the charging foul. Herb Blunt will now check in for the Quad City Thunder as Barry Sumter will probably rest out the rest of this one. And Herb never quite got his feet wet tonight. He did last night against Rochester inside with a couple of chance, but tonight every time they went low post to Herb Blunt, he tried to work one-on-one -on -one against the likes of Tony Brown and uh, Tony Costner, and they're both good defensive specialists with a lot of experience, and they basically took it to it. If you're going to take that ball in the middle, you're going to have to learn to get rid of it quick. Last night, he made the quick move. Tonight, he tried to, to play around with it a little bit, and he got stripped. Warwick for three. So Warwick makes the corner interesting again. It's 29-25 Thunder. Jones all the way gets it blocked by Costner, but they say he got him with the knee, and I believe that is the correct call. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on instant replay or not. And here we go. Here's... Now watch Costner's leg. He'll just ram it. Well, actually, with more with the body. Well, there, there it is. There's that body call again. But uh, Jones not uh, not afraid at all to take it down among the big guys and put it up. 115-97. Quad City Thunder in front. Troy Lewis. It's got to be strange for Troy because he hasn't played for so long. Broke the wrist in training camp. Now trying to get back in the flow. There's only one way to do it, and that's to do it. 116.97, Thunder. Up by six in the quarter. One minute and eight seconds remaining. Patio. Big throw. Patio! There's no doubt about it, that guy can shoot. Well, he proved that every Iowa basketball fan in Iowa City remembers Patio in that final four game, although UNLV got some big points inside as well. Well, Legler. Armin Gillis, was that it? Yeah, name? Armin Gillis. Lewis the other way, not this time. Jay, Nate Johnston almost had the rebound, but now he's going to pick up the personal foul, or Will Costner. Costner and Nate both went up for it. The way Costner's reaction. And these it's Flyer fans. Him. That's a six. And these Flyer fans are not pleased at all with the uh, way this game has gone here. 
probably probably three calls in a row there as you can see him battling underneath and Costner looked like it could have gone either way but Costner got called for it and that's three fouls in a row that could have gone either way that have gone against Rochester and I guess when things are going bad that's just the way it happens. Scott Carlin really hasn't put up a lot of black as far as the officiating is concerned and I, he does it in a more quieter way than does Coach Panazio. And Coach Panazio has been uh, seemingly content on that Thunder bench tonight. Why not? He's about 56 seconds away from picking up seven points in the standings. But remember, it's still only a four-point difference in the quarter. Now five, thanks to Nate Johnston. And you've got to wonder about this Rochester team. A team that going into the All-Star break won four out of six games, came out and has won one out of three, and apparently has some dissension in the ranks. They're going to have to hit this one if they want to get a point tonight. Legler doesn't. Rebound Blunt. Blunt will clear it away to Greg Jones. And Greg says, well, time is on our side. Don't forget that next Thunder game right here on KLJB. Next Thursday night at Lacrosse. We'll take the air at 7.30. Greg Jones out front, a little contact. <laughs> that was a Houdini act. He had it knocked away, picked it up, and scored. So everything is going the Thunder's way tonight. Bill McKinney, an NBA scout, will be our post-game interview. You want to stay with us for that and for all the wrap-up and scores. Nine seconds, eight seconds. The Thunder will just play a little catch. Lewis looks at the clock. He doesn't want to put up the three-pointer. He'll just eat it, and that's your ball game. 119-99, the Quad City Thunder win it by 20, and more importantly, have their first seven-point victory of the campaign, winning every quarter. We'll come back and take a look at some of the totals and more after this on KLJV.